Hey, it's Red and Code here, and today I'm going to showcase my first version of a Flappy Bird game built in Java and more specifically JavaFX and Scene Builder. This first version only have the basic movement of our bird or this yellow rectangle where it falls, as you can see, by itself. And if we then press space, I can make it jump. And we can stick to the top and let it fall. We can jump and we can jump up and down. And then the next version, we would add some obstacles we need to move around. And you might be able to see it. I've added a bit of acceleration. So I think it'll at least make the movement a bit more interesting. That we move faster and faster the further we move. So kind of like in real life, we would accelerate over time. And first, just inside Scene Builder, very simple setup, just an anchor pane with an ID, rectangle with an ID, and an anchor pane with an keyboard on key pressed call. Now let's take a look at the code. One thing to note, inside JavaFX there is a problem where if you just like this add a key event, you need inside your application setup to so add this scene get root that request focus, which kind of like reloads the scene, otherwise the key events won't load by itself. So you need to add this line if you're doing anything with like a basic key input. Or you could just add something else that actually loads the screen to begin with, for example, like a button. But we would need something like this if we're just using key input, like in this case. Let's have a look inside the controller. So because this is just a very small game, everything by now at least is built inside the controller. So we had our anchor pane as mentioned, we have our rectangle, and we then have an animation loop, which kind of like game loop runs every frame have a few variables how much are we moving every frame so time how many frames have we been moving so far which is used for the acceleration and how much are we jumping whenever we press space we then have an initialize we have a load method called once we then have our animation timer with an update which is then a method called every frame then start a game loop have our key pressed Whenever the key pressed, we check what key has been pressed. If it is space that's been pressed, we would like the bird to fly. Then simply just take and move our birds on the Y position. Negatively, our jump height. And it needs to be negative because, because of the way JavaFX was programmed. If we want to move upwards, we need to move negative pixels. So negative 100 would be moving 100 pixels up. And then we reset our timer to be zero. So the acceleration is kind of like reset every time we jump. We then have this extra setup to check if we are close to the top of the screen, like this. Instead of jumping over the screen, we stick to the top. We then had our update as mentioned, which is then called every frame, where we just increase the time, so time plus plus, so how many frames we've been moving without being interrupted by jumping, for example. We then move our bird by y delta, so how much you want to move, and then for how many frames have we been moving, because then we are accelerating, so first we're just moving y delta 0, y delta times 1, times 2, so we're moving faster, faster, and faster. And we then simply check if our bird is dead, we'd like to reset the bird. So relatively simple setup, we then had our load, which were only called once when the game started. In this case, I'm not doing anything, I'm just printing game starting. We then have been using move bird a few times, which is very simple. It takes our bird and change the y position of the bird by doing get the current position of the bird changed. Plus, where do how much you want to change it? So either negative to move it upwards or positive to move it downwards. We then check if the bird is dead by simply checking if the bird's y position is larger than or equal to the bottom of the screen. And it needs to be larger than, because as mentioned, when we're moving down, the Y gets larger. So we just simply get the layout Y, which is the original position of the bird. And then get Y, which is the change of the Y position. And then we can just measure the basic position plus the change position. So that would be its current position. If this current position is larger than, for example, our anchor pane in this case is 600 as its height. So we just check if this number is larger than 600, so it would mean if this rectangle is below like it is when we see it fall like this. So when we hit here, it resets, and it simply just call this reset method, which is very simple, it just takes its bird dot set y, so set its position from start 
to zero. So set it to its start position and then as well we reset time. So I hope that made sense and wasn't too confusing. But I've tried to create actually quite a few different methods, which by its name define, at least relatively, clearly what it's actually doing. We have something that moves the bird. This method only moves the bird, doesn't do anything else. We check if the bird is dead. Very simple method. Reset the bird, very simple method. So every step of what we're doing is its own method and it only has that functionality, that one method. So it's actually very separate, everything is very separate and should be relatively clear what we're doing. But that is the basic setup of my Flappy Bird game, at least for now. And I will of course we will continue working on this and adding some more functionality. But if you enjoyed this quick demonstration and showcase so far, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.